In this video, we're going to be talking about network performance. What is it? How do we measure it? Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and this video is a sampling from the CCST networking course that I'm currently developing, and I thought you might enjoy a sneak peek. Specifically, here's what we're going to be covering in this video. We're going to begin with some terminology. For example, what is the difference between bandwidth and throughput? They're not the same thing. Then we'll contrast latency and delay, and then we'll take a look at some of the different components that go into delay, such as processing delay, or serialization delay, or propagation delay. Then, in the second part of this video, we're going to take a look at a utility that allows us to actually measure throughput on our network. It's called iPerf. We're going to set this up. I'll show you how to configure a client, how to configure a server, and then we're going to measure our network throughput. And again, today's content is extracted from the CCST networking course that I'm currently working on. And later in this video, I'll tell you about how you can get access to the pre-release version of this course. Now, let's get into our discussion of network performance. If we want to manage a network, we need to be able to measure its performance. And in this video, we're going to take a look at a few different network performance metrics. As a really basic example, we could go out to a speed test website, such as speedtest.net, and we could measure our upload and download speeds between our device and an internet-based server. And we're going to distinguish between the concepts of bandwidth and throughput in this video. And in this example, when I go out to speedtest.net, it tells me that my download speed is a little over 801 megabits per second. That's the actual throughput as I'm downloading data from this internet-based server. Then when I upload, it's going to tell me that my upload throughput was a little over 894 megabits per second. And we can also see the overall latency or total delay as I was downloading as well as when I was uploading. We see that I had about 19 milliseconds of latency downloading and about 20 milliseconds of latency uploading. And in this video, we're going to see that latency is really the sum total of all delays. And we're going to take a look at what some of those delays are. But let's begin by contrasting bandwidth with throughput. When we say bandwidth, we're talking about the theoretical maximum amount of data that we could push through a link. Again, this is the theoretical capacity. It's unlikely we would ever reach this maximum theoretical capacity in real life. Instead, we might be concerned with throughput. That's the actual amount of data that is sent over a link or through a network device like a switch or a router over a certain period of time. So bandwidth is theoretical, throughput is actual data. And to visualize bandwidth and throughput, think of driving a car down the road. If you're on a one lane road, there's a limited amount of cars that could travel over that roadway at any one time. However, if we added additional lanes to that roadway, then we could have many more cars simultaneously going over that roadway. And that's analogous to increasing bandwidth. We have more lanes over which our bits can travel. But we said that throughput was the actual amount of data that we're sending over a link because we might have some packets that get corrupted, that get dropped, that have to be retransmitted. We might have some errors that occur on the wire. In our analogy with a roadway, let's imagine that there is some road construction going on and uh, we have these traffic cones put up. Now when all the traffic tries to come down these four lanes, one lane is going to have to merge into another lane and that's going to slow down the overall traffic flow. That's analogous to errors on a network reducing the throughput of a network link. So to sum up the difference between bandwidth and throughput, bandwidth, that's our theoretical maximum capacity of a link. Throughput is how much data is actually sent over that link in a certain period of time. Next, let's think about how long it takes to get from one point in the network to another point, specifically latency and delay. Latency is the total amount of time required for a packet to go from one point on the network to another point on the network. And that latency is going to be made up of multiple delay components. 
So a delay is a component of latency, and we add up all the different delays to get our total end-to-end -end latency. And let's take a look at a few examples of possible delay components. We might have propagation delay. This is the amount of time it takes for a photon on a fiber optic cable or some sort of a wireless signal or electricity crossing a copper wire. It's the amount of time required to transfer bits from one point to another. And until we get into quantum networking, we're somewhat limited by the speed of light. For example, if I had a fiber optic connection going from, let's say, London over to another site in Los Angeles, even if we had no errors on the network and I wanted to go to Los Angeles and then back to London, just the speed of light delay alone would be about 59 milliseconds. Now, that might not seem like much, but that's just propagation delay. We've got other delays that start to add up. Another type of delay that we might have is transmission delay. This is the amount of time it takes for a data packet to exit some sort of an interface, like a router interface. And this is going to vary based on that interface's speed, in other words, the speed of the network link, as well as the packet size. As the packet exits that interface, the clock is ticking, and that's going to be our transmission delay. To give you just an extreme example, and I realize that we would never have an interface that is this slow in today's networks, but back in the day when I started with networking, I would occasionally run into a 56 kilobit per second circuit. And as an example, it would take 214 milliseconds to send a 1500 byte packet out of a 56K interface. And that is a significant delay. That could destroy voice quality if you're trying to do something like voice over IP. Of course, in today's networks with our higher speed links, that's probably not going to be an issue in and of itself. But remember, the overall latency is the sum total of all these delays. So we've talked about propagation delay. Now every time we exit an interface, we've got a transmission delay. We also might run into queuing delay. Sometimes the router, as an example, or switch, is receiving data faster than it can be transmitted. What do we do? Well, that router or switch is going to have a buffer or a queue on that output interface. And it is going to be able to take that one physical queue, divide it up into sub queues, and we could configure quality of service, for example, to prioritize one queue above the others or to give a minimum bandwidth guarantee to those different queues based on the priority of the traffic. Well, let's say that we have a packet coming into this router and there's not enough bandwidth to send it immediately, so it gets placed in one of those sub queues. The time it resides in that sub queue is called queuing delay. And then when bandwidth is available and based on our quality of service settings, the router is eventually going to take that packet out of its sub queue and send it out on the wire. But it was delayed because it spent some time in the queue. And this is not a comprehensive listing, but just as one other example of delay, consider processing delay. Let's say, for example, we have a router and uh, there is a uh, packet coming into this router. Well, that router has to do some work on that packet. It has to check it for errors. It has to look at its routing table and see out of which interface that packet needs to be forwarded. But this amount of time gives us our processing delay. So those are a few examples of delay, propagation, transmission, queuing, processing. And remember that it is the sum total of delays that gives us our end-to-end -end latency between two different places in the network. Before we get into the second part of this video, I wanted to let you know about how you can access all of the courses in our library, including some of the pre-release content like you're watching now, for less than a dollar a day. It's what we call our All Access Pass. And it's going to give you streaming access to all of our current courses in addition to the courses that are still in development, such as CCST Networking and AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner. And that's what's in development at the time of this recording. But we have lots of other updates coming out soon, like the update to Encore and a NARC, and there'll be a CCNA later this year and an update to CL Core. So lots of updates coming to this library, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to do it. Instead of charging $399 for a course, which is going to be updated at some point, I decided to make this training much more accessible by letting you subscribe for just $29 a month 
and you get access to everything. And what everything actually means, that's going to change continually as we make these updates. But at the time of this recording, here's what's in this All Access Pass library. And again, $29 a month, or if you want to go ahead and sign up for a year, you get two months free. So one payment of $290 gets you access to all of this and all the changes we're going to make over the next year. And that's way less than you would pay for a single course. Now, I don't know when you're watching this video, so this list of courses might be different. Be sure to go out to kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access. And under the FAQs, you're going to see a listing of all the currently available titles. And also on this page, there are buttons that allow you to sign up for either the monthly or the yearly plan. So whatever works best for you, check it out at kwtrain.com slash all hyphen access and get access to our entire library of courses for less than a dollar a day. Now let's get into the second part of our video. In this video, we want to take a look at the iPerf utility. This is going to allow us to measure the throughput between a couple of devices on our network. And the great news is, this is a free open source utility. You can download it from iperf.fr, and it's available on a wide range of platforms. And what we're going to do is install this iperf executable on a couple of devices. One is going to be the server and one is going to be the client in this conversation. And the client is going to generate and send traffic to the server. The server is going to be listening for incoming traffic. And iperf is going to calculate the throughput between the client and the server. And in this demonstration, I've got a couple of PCs. They're both running Mac OS, PC1 and PC2. We're going to make one the server. We're going to make one the client. And we're going to pretend that we're doing some network troubleshooting where we've been having some performance issues with some of our wireless clients. We think it's because clients are running slower on the 2.4 gigahertz wireless band as compared to the 5 gig band. So what we're going to do is run this iperf utility a couple of times. We're going to run it once with PC2 on the 5 gig band. And we're going to run it again with a PC2 on the 2.4 gig band. Then we'll compare our results. Now let's go out to a live interface and take a look at iperf in action. All right, let's get iperf3 running on PC1. This is going to be our iperf server. And I've downloaded iperf to my downloads folder. But notice I'm running Mac OS. So if I just say iperf3, even though I'm in the correct folder, it's not going to see it because it's not part of my path. To make Linux or Unix run something from the current folder, we need to say in the current folder or current directory, which we indicate with a dot, slash, there's a file called iperf3. Now if I press enter, it's going to give me the help screen for iperf3. And you see there are lots of different options we could take advantage of here. We could, for example, set the quality of service marking to a certain value to see if our quality of service settings on the network are really doing anything. But in this video, we're not going to get into all these different options. We're going to keep it really basic and test the throughput between PCs 1 and 2. So I will say dot slash iperf3 space, and I want this to be my server. I'll do a dash s to say it's the server. Notice we're listening on port 5201. And the default time that this is going to run is 10 seconds. But notice that we could use the dash T option if we wanted it to run for a shorter or longer amount of time. Now I'm going to go over to PC2 that's going to be our client. And we'll type in dot slash iperf3 dash C for client. And then I'll put in the IP address of the server, which is 172.16.105.160. And we press enter. And we're going to let it run for 10 seconds. Notice it's giving us output for each interval. It's telling us how many megabytes it's transferring. And it's giving us the bandwidth. Now, this is technically the throughput because the throughput is the amount of data that actually got through. It's not the theoretical bandwidth of the network. It's the actual amount of data that made it through within a certain amount of time. And it seems like we started out around 354 megabits per second. We peaked around 470 megabits per second. And we ended up a bit slower at 215 megabits per second. But on average, we had a throughput of about 430 megabits per second. Now this is with PC2 running on the 5 gigahertz band of a wireless network. And let's say we're doing some troubleshooting and we suspect that performance declines if somebody runs on our 2.4 gig band because it's so crowded right now. So what I'm going to do is switch over PC2 to the 2.4 gig band 
and then we're going to run this test again. We're now running on that 2.4 gig band. Let's run the test again from the client machine, PC2, and let's see if our bandwidth, which is really our throughput, let's see if it drops. And if so, how significantly does it drop? We enter the same command again on PC2, and look at this. We have a significant decline in our overall throughput. We went from about 430 megabits per second to about 80 megabits per second. And uh, that was just by switching bands on our wireless network. So if we were doing troubleshooting, we could conclude from this that we're going to get a lot more throughput if we stay on the 5 gig band. And that's an example of how we can use a really useful utility called iPerf.